Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Colleen. If you're new here, I'm glad that you stopped by today and I hope that you will find something that you enjoy here and that you would consider subscribing to the channel and uh, sharing this with friends. Today I'm going to uh, share with you our version uh, or what we do with some leftover turkey. There's tons of things you can do with leftover turkey and I thought with the holidays uh, coming up for my American friends, this might be useful to you in the in the coming weeks. Um, I'm sorry I didn't do it earlier for my Canadian friends, but maybe you can um, use the recipe still. So I'm going to gather up the things that I need. I have most of them set aside here, uh, and we'll get started. I'm going to make today a turkey shepherd's pie. I don't think you can call it shepherd's pie if it doesn't have ground lamb or ground beef, but you're going to be able to see what we can do with the leftovers from the turkey and make a delicious meal for your family. So I'll be right back after this. So we're going to start off this with just a little bit of cooking. We need about three quarters of a cup, this is probably way too much, three quarters of a cup of celery. Now, you can use or as much or use as much or as little of this as you want that we're making, uh, putting together the kind of the traditional uh, flavor ingredients to get started on this. And let's see if a towel helps dull that noise a little bit. I, um, I have people who um, are sharing with me that I uh, could be doing this, and I know I could be. I just sometimes forget. Maybe that helps a little bit. So, I'm using two short ribs because I cut off quite a bit of the bottom. I'm using two short ribs of celery. have that ready to go and I'm sure that's about three quarters of a cup. I have one larger carrot from out of my garden which produced fantastic this year. I have so many carrots I've been giving them away to the neighbors and kids and yes I'm happy to be able to share them with everybody and it's amazing what you can grow in such a small space. I don't think I'm going to be able to get three quarters of a cup of carrot uh, cubed up out of here. Let's see though. I might have to get out another carrot, but I don't think so. This is um, a time, or this recipe is a, a, an opportunity to really be creative. So if you didn't have a fresh carrot to cut up, one of the things that's going to go in here is peas. And I use frozen peas in this recipe because they go in frozen. This doesn't take a long time to cook in the oven and the peas, they get hot through, but they still have that fresh pea um, texture crunch. It's not really a crunch, but um, they kind of pop in your mouth and I enjoy that. So you could use a mixture of frozen peas and carrots and you would be set. You wouldn't have to go about cleaning a carrot, peeling it, preparing it, dicing it up. And then I need three quarters of a cup of onion. So three quarters of each of these. So that makes that easy. You don't have a lot of uh, different measurements to remember. And over on the stove, I have some potatoes boiling. I had lots of leftover turkey, I had some leftover gravy, but I did not have any leftover potatoes. So I am cooking some potatoes fresh for this, and um, then we'll mash them up. We're basically making a shepherd's pie. So I'm going to throw these into the skillet here behind me to get um, cooking down and then we'll gather up the rest of the ingredients and 
get started on the turkey because some of it's still in big pieces. You could also do this with chicken. Um, I could see that you could even do this. Oh, this is a hot onion. Um, you could even do this with uh, probably rotisserie chicken from the grocery store and it would turn out great as well. It's uh, not always easy to find out, find recipes that use up small bits of uh, leftovers. So I need a couple tablespoons of butter. Over here in my pan. And I'm just gonna guess at this, so I'm not gonna be too precise. I'm gonna guess that that's a couple tablespoons. Um, but if you are not comfortable just adding that, then definitely get out your measuring spoons and measure that. And I'm going to dump these guys right into that pan and get them going. There we go. I will need that again, so I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to just gather up a wooden spoon and I'm going to give this a stir. We want to soften these down. They are going to cook in the oven, which we have set to 375 degrees, or we will have in a minute. I haven't yet, but that's what it has to go to. There we go. And we're going to let them soften. Now, in the meantime, I'm going to grab the meat. And I'll bring the gravy over here. Why don't I bring a bunch of it over while I'm here? So I'm going to gather up some thyme leaves and some rosemary. And I need about four cups of turkey. Now I think I have dark meat and white meat here. I think I have more than four cups for this recipe. But, oh, I love turkey. It's one of those meats that when you when you cook it and you eat it, it just brings back such fond memories of meals shared with loved ones, and and I love that. So these don't all have to be small pieces, but you know they should be bite-sized pieces at least. Let's do this. We only need these probably to go three to four minutes in the skillet. And that gives us time to chop these up. Now, as I said, I think you could use chicken, turkey, almost any leftover meat using this particular recipe. Now, I'm going to do a bit of measuring because now I'm looking at it. I'm feeling a little nervous that maybe I don't have enough. I think I need, what did I say I needed? I think I only need two cups. Oh yeah, and two cups. I'm gonna add what's left here because I don't wanna have it left over again. I know that seems like quite a bit more, but it's one of those things we can be a little bit, um, let's see, what's the right wording? We can be a little more generous. And so I think I'm gonna end up with at least three cups here. Almost four cups. That's okay. As I said, I want to use it all up. Now, my only decision might be whether or not my pan that I have chosen is going to be big enough for this. All right, I don't have to shop for anything else. I'm going to just wash up my hands and we'll get going on the rest. Now, I have here uh, two cups of leftover gravy. Now, if you did not have gravy left over from your project, then you could use um, the packets of gravy mix and use the turkey gravy and make up the two packets or whatever your gravy mix. You just need about two, two cups. You could also use one package of gravy mix and uh, any leftover gravy. So if you don't have quite enough gravy, you could um, do that. So again, it's um, whatever you have. This is the kind of recipe that this is. I'm going to use up what we have. Now, when I put this into the fridge, 
I put a piece of plastic wrap on it onto the very surface, surface of the gravy because if you don't cover the very surface of the gravy, it's going to get a skin on top, which is really unpleasant. So I, I put the plastic wrap on top of it so that it doesn't form a skin and so it's ready when I, I'm ready. Get rid of that. So I have my meat. I have my gravy. I can get rid of this. Now my potatoes are ready, so I'm going to drain them and I'm going to rice them. I'll show you what that process looks like. I just grabbed another one of my big measuring cups. These are the handiest things. Um, you can mix in them. You can measure in them. I have two, and, and I really, really like them. Um, I'm sure you can find them on Amazon. I'll try and remember to link them below, although I don't have an Amazon shop at this time. <laughs> There's a couple of these things that you might find useful. Okay, so, whoops, let's go to that the wrong way. I have a fantastic uh, potato ricer. Now, we had an old-fashioned one that we used for years, but it started to get, so it was a bit rusty everywhere and you couldn't keep the rust off it so I invested in this one it was it wasn't inexpensive but it wasn't horrible because it's very well built and I feel like I'm going to be able to use this for the rest of my life so I'm going to grab these potatoes and go into the ricer I like using the ricer for this particular recipe because it makes the potatoes really nice and fluffy Whoop. Let's not get them all over the kitchen. And this also takes a lot less effort than my old masher did, which, or my old ricer, which took a lot of effort. Um, but this one, I don't know whether the handles are longer or what makes it better, but it just is. Now I need, according to the recipe, I need four cups. I'm going to shut this off and give it a stir because I can smell it getting too hot over here. Um, and I don't want that to get any more cooked than that. So in we go. I may have too many potatoes. We'll just see. Because, as I said, the recipe calls for four cups. I have too much, but that's okay. I just may have to choose a bigger, um, a bigger dish to put in this all in in the oven. Get this out of the way. Finish this off. Now, if oops, if you're not comfortable doing this or if you don't feel that you're able then by all means use your regular potato masher you don't have to use this fancy thing and or if you're at a stage where mashing potatoes is just too much for you you could definitely use uh, powdered powdered potatoes that you would uh, buy in the box use them as I would keep saying, there's a lot of versatility in this dish. So let's not forget that. I'm going to add some butter to this mixture. And I am going to also add a little bit of milk because I don't want it to be dry. Um, we all know that butter adds flavor. Now, I didn't salt these potatoes when I put them into the uh, water, which I should have done. So I am going to add a little salt at this point. I don't want to get too carried away because my um, gravy is a bit salty. I don't know how I let that happen, but I did. Maybe there were too many cooks in the kitchen. My husband and I enjoy working in the kitchen together, but... Sometimes he'll get a step done and I haven't realized he's done it. And um, so sometimes that happens. 
I am grateful for his help in the kitchen. He enjoys cooking and um, we enjoy working together. So, there. You know what? I don't think I need to add any milk to that. Now, you could use leftover potatoes for this dish, but if you did, you're going to want to make sure that you heat them first. It just makes them easier to put on top. Okay, I'm going to plug this pan back in. It's kind of getting ahead of me there. And I'm going to turn it back on. And I am going to add my meat into it now. Because I want to warm that now. I'm going to add the gravy. And I'm going to add the peas, which I need to get out of the freezer. Let's give that a stir. You want everything to be hot going into this dish. Okay. So, let's so turn it down a little. You want to get the peas. This is definitely more than one cup of peas, so I'm going to put in about a cup. And you could use corn in this. Uh, we're not eating corn right now at our house, but you could put corn in there. And that would work great too. Now we just need to warm this through. We just need to make sure that the um, turkey is warmed through and that the gravy is warmed through. And at this point, I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of rosemary leaves, and I'm just gonna give them a, a good squish in my hands to break them up a little bit, because they're dried. If you had fresh, that would be better. Um, you wouldn't have to go through this. And I'm going to add half a teaspoon of pine leaves. And if you had fresh, you could definitely use that. And I don't have any fresh right now, but I do like dry fruits anyway because they seem to have so much more flavor. Now let's stir this about. It's starting to bubble, but I want it to be really hot. I also have to stop over here and get this oven going. Now, I have the oven set at 375 degrees, and this takes about, uh, if you make it in a 9 by 13 pan, it's going to take you about 25 to 30 minutes. The pan that I'm using is one of my the old, uh, what do you call this? I forget what it's called, white something. It's made by Corny, I believe. Anyway, that part doesn't matter whatever dish you have that you think can hold all the ingredients. That's what you're going to use. I'm starting to feel a little skeptical about my dish choice, but I'm going to give it the old college try anyway. I hope that this has all made a bit of sense, that you can substitute things back and forth, um, that you can, you know, come up with other ways to make this dish happen. So, I think this is bubbling through. And I feel like everything's probably warm. I'm going to unplug it. And I'm going to bring it over here. Move a few things out of the way. And I will know soon enough if this dish is big enough. Okay, I'm just going to give this a spray. Quick spray. And then I'm going to start scooping this in here. What do you think? I think I stand any chance at all of getting this all in there. This makes definitely enough for six people. Um, so I know that I'm going to have leftovers. Oh, the smell. The turkey smell, people. I hope that as we work our way to the American Thanksgiving that 
you guys find this, this dish useful. If for no other reason, you can use this exact idea with chicken and this freezes quite well. So you can get everything all together, get your potatoes on top and um, cover it with um, a lid of some sort. So maybe a piece of plastic wrap and then wrap it in tin foil and put it into the freezer. And the night before you're going to use it, take it out of the freezer and put it in the fridge to thaw. Then, of course, it's going to take a much longer time um, because everything is cold, so it's going to take a lot longer in the oven. I would uh, bring the oven to 350 degrees, and then uh, you will probably have to cook it an hour and 20 minutes or somewhere in that neighborhood in order to get everything hot all the way through. It also depends on the depth of your vessel, of course, because if your cooking dish is a 9 by 13, then things are spread out, not in such a thick layer. So there's that to consider too. And now, onto the top of this, I'm going to add potatoes. And to start with, hi Peyton. Hi. To start with, I'm just going to scoop these onto the top and then I'll spread them all out and they'll be ready to go into the oven. You could also add a little bit of uh, cheese onto the top if you chose to. I am not going to do that. I am going to get this like so all the way around, kind of level it off. Now, extra points here. <coughs> Man, I dirtied as many dishes as if I'd made the dish from scratch. Extra points here. Take a fork and run your fork just to give it some texture on the top. And then I'm going to just leave it like that. Leave these little edges popping up that um, you can broil and have a little crispy topping on it. So I'm going to put this into the oven um, on 375 degrees. I'm probably going to leave it in there around 35 minutes. And then I'm going to switch it over to the broiler for maybe, I don't know, seven or eight minutes and by then it should be bubbling through. I'm also gonna put it on a sheet tray because I'm worried that it may bubble up and over in my oven and I don't want that mess. And I've had that happen before. So that might be a tip for you to put, it, put a sheet tray underneath it in case it bubbles up. But it looks like we made a good choice of the vessel. So I will pop this in the oven and I will be back as soon as this is ready to come out of the oven so that you can see what it looks like. Uh, it's like a brand new meal. <laughs> Maybe because it is. Uh, we've just taken an old classic and we've made it work for us. And um, this smells delicious. I know that it's going to taste fantastic. I might even crack open some cranberries to go along with this. And I hope that you've enjoyed this video and that if you have, you will go through the usual steps of liking it and sharing it with your friends. I appreciate all of you for being here and I hope that you'll give this recipe a try and I look forward to seeing you again soon on the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.